The C++ Standard Template Library is a library that contains functionality for containers as well as other things. These come in really handy, so we don't have to write our own data structures and optimize them ourselves. We can use the containers that are part of the library. Before we get into writing our own data structures, like linked lists, let's look at the structures available in the C++ Standard Template Library. By utilizing these structures before we get into how to implement our own, you can get a better vision of how they are supposed to work. The vector class essentially behaves like an array, but the vector class will handle resizing on its own. We can insert items into a vector object with the pushback function, and randomly access elements of the vector with the subscript operator. We can also get the amount of items in the vector with the size function. There's also functionality to clear out the entire vector, or just one element. First, you need to include the vector library. Declare the vector variable, specifying the data type that it will store within the less than and greater than signs. You can add items to the vector with the pushback function. And you can get the size of the vector at any time with the size function. To remove an item at a specific index, use the erase function. The argument will be variable.begin, and then add the index number. More on what this is later on. You can easily output all the elements of the vector with a for loop, going from 0 to the size of the vector. We can also use iterators to iterate through every element, but more on that later. The map class is like an array, but the indices can be integers or other data types. This is known as a key value pair. Each index must be unique, as that is the key that represents the value of the object. To insert an item onto a map, you need to create a pair object. Both the map and the pair have to have the same template types. First, you need to include the map library. The map object needs two template types. The key is first, and the value is second. For this example, the key is an integer. It could be an employee ID. The value is a string, and it could be an employee name. Use the insert function to insert a new element into the map. But you need to pass in a pair object as the item being inserted. You could declare the pair outside of the insert function, or just pass it in as an argument. The pair types need to match the map types. Then, within the parentheses, this is the constructor, you pass in the values. To access the value at a particular index, you can use the subscript operator with the key, or use the at function. You can clear out the map with the clear function. You can erase a specific item with the erase function, and pass in the key of the element. If you want to iterate through every item in the map, you'll have to use iterators. Yep, it looks weird. Let's break this down. This is a for loop, but you're used to seeing it like this, where you have something like at a starting point of zero, going until some size, and incrementing by one every time. This loop is in the same order. We declare a variable, we specify the criteria for the loop to continue, and we specify what gets done at the end of every loop. First, we have to create an iterator. It will be an iterator of your map, so use the map data type with the same template types. Use colon colon iterator at the end. This whole thing would be your iterator data type. Next, it is what I've chosen as the variable name of our iterator. The initial value is the beginning of our map, which we can get with the variable name dot begin. Secondly, we specify the criteria for when the loop will continue looping. We will continue looping until the iterator reaches the end. So we add, if the iterator is not equal to the end, we're going to continue looping. Finally, every time through the loop, we are going to increment the iterator. This will go to the next element of the map. The iterator is essentially a pointer. You can get the key of the element by accessing the first member, and you can get the value of the element by accessing the second member. To use a list, you will need to include the list library. A list is similar to a vector, but there are differences. With vector, you are generally just adding items to the end of the array with the pushback function. With the list, you can push to the end of the list, to the beginning of the list, or somewhere in between. But you can't randomly access items at some index with the subscript operator, like you can with a vector. You will have to use an iterator to access every item of the list. With list, we also get a function called reverse that will reverse the elements in the list. 
and a handy sort function that will put the elements in order. A queue is known as a first-in, first-out structure. You can add items to the queue and remove items from the queue. The first item to be added will be the first item that will be removed. In C++ terms, you have push back and pop front, but for the queue you just use the functions push and pop. As you push items into the queue, the first item goes in the front and everything else lines up behind it. A queue structure might be useful for modeling incoming work to be processed, so that items that are received first are dealt with first. Use push to add an item to the queue. Empty will return true or false based on whether the list is empty. You can get the number of things within the queue with the size function. Access the item at the front of the queue with the front function. And remove the item at the front of the queue with the pop function. A stack is known as a first in, last out structure. The first item added to the stack will be the last item to be removed. So, push back and pop back. So when you push something onto the stack, it goes on top. If you pop something off the stack, it removes the topmost item. The first item goes on bottom, and all subsequent items end up on top of it. And with a stack, you can only access the topmost item. Use push to add items to the stack. Check if the stack is empty with the empty function. You can also use size to get the amount of elements in the stack. And you can look at the topmost item with the top function and remove the topmost item with the pop function. The C++ standard template library is pretty handy and it is good to be familiar with how to use the containers. The c++.com reference page also has a list of the functions and sample code for using each of these structures.